is making a plan and putting it into practice. This month, we'll be learning 1 Timothy 4.8. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. Training. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a right hand thumbs up and a left hand pointer and you're going to turn them into a violin, something that needs lots of practice and training. So you're going to go training the body. So you're going to cup your hands and go shoulders to hips, cover your whole body. Value. So you're going to make two peace signs, tip them forward, touch your fingers, and circle them up. Value godly. So you're going to hold your left palm up and use your right fingers to sweep it off and make it spotless, clean, and holy. Every. So you're going to hold your left palm up, you're going to cup your right hand, and sweep around the whole room like you're gesturing to everything and catching it in your left hand. Every. Promise. So you're going to touch your right pointer finger to your lips, and as you speak it out, you're going to splat it onto your left fist. So you've got a left fist, a right pointer, splat. Promise. Help. So now you're going to flip that into a left palm up. You're going to put your right thumbs up on top of it. And then your whole stack is going to come up. Help. Life. So you make two thumbs up. You're going to put them in front of your ribs and bring them all the way up to your collar. We'll do that for life and for living. You, that's an easy one, and come. So you're going to point out with both fingers and then call them towards yourself. Come. And all of that is found in 1 Timothy 4, 8. Let's put it all together. Training. The body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8.
a little faster. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about commitment while we take a look at a word picture so good, you might just say it's enlightening. Whew. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about commitment, which is making a plan and putting it into practice. It looks like you're practicing something. Well, I thought it would be awesome to revisit a sport this summer, like rock climbing. Stupendous. Right? My first time climbing was so awesome, I went for hours. But the next morning, I could barely lift my fork. Sore arms, huh? <sighs> I got to do some training. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, you're in luck. It just so happens that I know someone who knows a lot about training. Oh, yeah. His name is Samuel, and his sport is soccer, and he is joining us right now. Hey, come hey on in. Guys. Hey, guys. Hey, Samuel, we are so excited to have you I'm here with us today. So happy to be here, Zeke and Carter. So excited for what we have today. Well, we want to learn how you train to be so good at soccer. Yes, like for starters, how did you get started playing soccer? My two cousins, they're the ones that really introduced me to soccer. So ever since then, I got to play with them, be part of their team, and from then, it was a lot of fun. What do you enjoy most about playing soccer? Well, I love playing soccer because when you're out there on the field, it really does feel like you're out there being free. 
Um, you get to be part of a team. It feels like you guys are working all together towards one goal. And it's really a lot of fun being able to make tackles, being able to kick the ball, make passes. I have a blast every time. So would you say that getting good at a sport involves a lot of training? Oh, definitely, definitely. I would say it involves a lot of training because it's something that takes repetition. You know, you gotta go out there and practice, make sure you're, you're honing your skills, make sure that you're keeping up your endurance, definitely things like that. So I would say it takes a lot of training. So why is training so important? That's a very good question. Training is important because you wanna build up your muscles to get stronger, if you go out there and you're not really training, you might get hurt. So that's something you want to avoid, you know? Uh, training also, it helps you because it keeps your skills consistent. And so if you're not training, you might lose a little bit of those skills. You know, as I'm getting older, I feel like I'm losing some of those skills sometimes. So it's important to keep the training up. Yeah. So how is soccer still a part of your life? Soccer is so important because it brings me back to that, that feeling of being part of a team. Like I said, being with my cousins out there on the field, feels like I'm part of a community again. So I love playing soccer for that reason. Well, you have that soccer ball. Do you think you can show us anything? Well, I think I could pull out a move or two. Yes, awesome. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amazing, that was incredible. <laughs> thank you guys, man. I love how training has become such a big part of your life. Yes, and thank you so, so much for sharing all this amazing stuff with us. Of course, guys. Thank you guys for having me, Zegan Carter. It's been so much fun. Yes, I am so excited to start training for real now. And I'm also slightly intimidated. You sure shed some light on the whole training process. Speaking of light, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Psalms. Long before there were high-tech lyric and dance videos for worship, there were the Psalms. For thousands of years, the Psalms were the main songbook of God's people, the Israelites. The individual songs, or Psalms, were composed over many years. About half of them were written by King David. Some Psalms are songs of praise or thanksgiving to God. Others share wisdom, and many are cries for help in a tough situation. In every case, the Psalms speak truth about who we are and who God is. There are 150 Psalms, and the very longest is Psalm 119. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. We don't know for sure if King David or someone else composed the psalm, but we do know they wrote it in a very cool way. See, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and 22 sections, or stanzas, of Psalm 119. And guess what? Each stanza starts with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's what we call an acrostic. The psalm starts out like this. Blessed are those who live without blame, they live in keeping with the law of the Lord. Over and over, Psalm 119 shares how valuable and beautiful God's words are. They are said to be sweeter than honey and better than thousands of pieces of gold and silver. In verse 105, the psalmist writes, Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. That is an amazing word picture. But to understand it, you need to put yourself in the sandals of someone from the psalmist's time. See, for most of us, light is really easy, even if it's dark outside. All you have to do is flip a switch and voila! All the light you need. But at the time the psalmist was writing, there was no electricity. On days when there was no moon, when it got dark, it got dark. There were no street lights or bright lights from cities or towns. It was can't see your hand in front of your face dark. Can you imagine trying to go anywhere at night? It's pitch black and all you can do is guess where to put your foot for the next step and hope it's not a nest of poisonous vipers. 
lights, please! Thankfully, people did have oil lamps. Now, this may not seem like a lot of light to us, but to people with no electricity, this was the most beautiful warm glow, especially on a moonless night. By this light, you could see where it was safe to put your foot. You could see which way to go when you got to return in the road. In the same way, the psalmist wrote that God's word can be like a light, showing us how to make wise choices when things in life seem dark and confusing. We live in a broken world, whether your life seems really great or kind of hard right now. You will face tough decisions. You will deal with difficult things at school or home. But God's word, the Bible, is always available to help you make the wise choice. Maybe your friend tripped you by accident and you're really mad. We find in Ephesians, be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Or maybe your little sister is driving you nuts asking to play and you just want to yell at her. But we read in James, everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. The very best way to make God's word a light in your life is to make God's word a part of your life. Read it, memorize it, talk about it. The more God's word shines like a lamp in your life, the more it will shine through you to light the way for those around you. The end. I, for one, am thankful we now have these instead of these. <laughs> Bright light is a lot easier to come by these days, but we still need the light of God's word just as much as the psalmist did. So what's our part in the story? Great question. God's word can shine a light on everything in our lives that is hard and confusing, but that only happens when we practice hearing from God. Like with our ears? Some people have actually heard God's voice out loud, but usually God doesn't speak in a way we can hear with our ears. The best place to start is where the psalmist starts, with God's word. The Bible. Exactly. You can make it a habit to listen on an app, read it online, or make notes in your own Bible. When you ask God for help, God can make those words come alive for you and cause certain words and ideas to stand out to you. As we read, we can see how Jesus lived and follow his example. And you can memorize verses too, when God can bring those words to mind right when you need them. Another way to hear from God is through wise people who love you and love Jesus. They can share with you the wisdom they've learned from God. It could be your parents, a small group leader, or even a coach. Exactly, that's right. And God can also speak directly to your heart and mind through words and images, especially when you take time to be quiet. It might just be a thought that seems wiser or, or kinder than what you usually think, or a creative way to solve a problem. How do I know it's not just me? Well, practice. And if you aren't sure if what you're hearing is from God, it's a great idea to ask a grown-up who is following God too. Sometimes that's hard for me to wrap my head around. I mean, the God who made the whole universe wants to talk to me? Mind blown. You got it. Just takes a little patience and practice. See you next time. <laughs> so here's the thing. Practice hearing from God. That's one of the most important things to practice if you want your faith to grow. But you can also practice other things too. I thought you were gonna train for rock climbing. Well, after talking to Samuel, I kinda wanna try soccer now. Well, show me what you got. Ready? Yeah. Well, you want me to show you how it's done? Sure. Yeah, I, I think we need to get Samuel back uh, in here. Uh, sure. Well, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. Oh, you want to practice more? Yeah, but where to go? How are we going to practice that? Oh. Want to practice more? Absolutely. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Four. Oh. New record. 
we need the light of God's word in our lives. God's word can shine a light on everything in our lives that is hard or confusing, but it only happens when we practice hearing from God. Say that with me. Practice hearing from God. That's an important part of our training plan. It's a huge way that we can grow in our faith. And a great way to practice hearing from God is by reading the Bible. That way you can see how Jesus lived and then follow his example. Think about how you could make a habit to read the Bible. You could ask an adult for help and set aside a certain time each day to read with them. You could listen to the Bible on your device. You could write down things you've learned or read a devotion that helps you understand what God's word means for your life. And you can definitely pray and ask God to help you understand. When you ask for God's help, God can cause certain words and ideas to stand out so that you can see what they might mean for you. You can also take it a step further and actually memorize verses like we do here at church. Then God can bring those words to your mind right when you need them, even in times of trouble. Let's talk in small group about how we can practice hearing from God and grow in our faith. Oh God.